everybody. My name's Tracy Fullwood. I'm the creator and founder of PottyTraining.com.au and the Know Your Child brand. And that's what we'll be going through today. Know your child and toilet train in days. And the reason you can do that, because if you can understand why your child's doing what they're doing, then the how becomes more obvious. And you have a solution, but not only to toilet train your child in days, but knowing how to raise them as well, which makes all the difference to the process. My background, I'm a mum of three beautiful children. They're now 13, 10 and coming up to 8. And look, where it all started for me is I had heaps of hassles toilet training. I did all the wrong things with my first, waited till 2, start, stop, start, stop, very inconsistent with regards to what I was doing. And so in the end of it, complete toilet refusal, 7 months wasted in a screaming child. My background's in product design, which really helps with regards to this whole situation because we look at the holistic viewpoint of the user and that's what happened. And so I designed up a system which now presents itself as our Wiz and Flock Ultimate Toilet Training System, Bella and Dumpy today. Three days later, done. Racing to go every time, one week later night trained. Now, most people would look at the screaming child and go, okay, my child's not ready, I'll stop. But this is the situation. I created the problem because I simply just didn't know what I was doing. But I was also the solution, which makes you be very excited for you because of the fact that it's up to us to understand and know. So once I changed what I was doing, like I said, three days later done, one week later night trained. And so this is the sort of thing that I guess we're wanting to help parents. If we can avoid the situation in the first place, prevention, is so much easier than the cure. You pay with interest big time later on trying to solve the cure, which is exactly what I did with regards to Maya. And a lot of people, if you just understand the window of opportunity that I'm about to run through and know that it's actually a lot easier, you can avoid all of those challenges to start with. My sister then started with her twin boys, she actually, uh, they were showing signs of readiness. They were 14 months old at the time, just after I was toilet training Maya. And signs of readiness are things like pulling at the nappy, dislike of wearing the nappy, telling you weasel poos before or after the event, taking an interest in you going to the toilet, things like that. The challenge with readiness is you cannot rely on it exclusively to start toilet training because there's two personalities that just simply won't show you signs of readiness and I'll run through that um, today as well for you. So if you're waiting for your child to show signs of readiness and they aren't going to because they're one of these personalities, you could be waiting a long time. So this is the challenge with that. But they were showing signs of readiness and if your child is showing signs of readiness, get going. Obviously, it, that you've ticked the box, they're willing and able. So it's going to be easy for you. So get going and start the process. So that's what Kylie did. And we actually created what we call our bulletproof boy pack just from what she was doing. Started at 14 months, daytime trained 17 months, nighttime trained 18 months, done. She saved thousands of dollars in nappies by early retirement of 18 months, no more nappy. And so this is, I guess, what we want to help parents to do. I started to do a little bit more research and I actually discovered a book called Early Start Potty Training by Dr. Linda Sona. I had a four month old at the time and look, I just, the first couple of pages got me. It basically read, started to put the infant on the edge of the toilet around 15 days of age and at four months used only one nappy a day. He was four months old, like I said, I thought, what have I got to lose? Keep in mind, I just had heaps of hassles toilet training my two-year-old. Within days, wheeze on the potty, one month bowel control. I have not had to change a pooey nappy with Kai since five months old. Seriously, the way to go. I've done two babies now and a toddler. Babies, don't say no. That's it. That's the, that's the sum of it. Why would we wait to start something new with our child at an age where they can say no really well? They call it terrible too for a reason, and yet we don't think about it. And this is the problems and challenges that parents are finding themselves in. And which leads me on to this, I could start and finish this workshop seriously with two things. This is two things, the secret to successful toilet training comes down to just two things. Number one, you need to lose the nappy, and number two, you need to start early. That's it. That's the sum of it. If you want to avoid things like poo problems and stuff like that. For those parents who are already in the cure phase and maybe have already started and created maybe a few problems, it's okay, we can help you there as well because you can use the Know Your Child strategies for starting and finishing well or also overcoming those sorts of challenges. Let's go, 
Yes, we were on the first season of Shark Tank, and I guess what that enabled us to do is the ultimate toilet training system was finally created. We ended up getting free mentorship from Red Balloon, from Naomi Simpson, which was fantastic. And so it just went on from there. And I guess this is where it's been that culmination of nine years experience with regards to working with Wees and Poos. It's now made it even easier for parents with regards to our Know Your Child system and what you can get out of it. Just quickly run through the latest research with regards to toilet training, because often this can give you an understanding of why again and I guess this is done by the University of New South Wales it's called toilet training infants and children in Australia I had the privilege to interview Anna Christie the author of this project and I guess what the conclusion to it all is is the fact that if you can see that pull up packet on the, the front page of that research um, document the summary of the last paragraph simply says Australians have abandoned toilet training that we can look at that pull up packet of that four five year old and go that's okay and not even think twice about it and look it's not about making us feel bad. They look, things have changed with regards to because what they established that just one generation ago, we were toilet training a year and a half earlier than what we are today. And this is when, obviously, when we were using cloth nappies and, and mum and dad weren't at work, um, to, to in the workforce and things like that. So we can't beat ourselves up about it. But we can't be ignorant to the situation that's happening now because of late toilet training. And the thing is, you may be surprised at the definition of what they actually came up with that late actually is. And what they established is that there's a window of opportunity whereby the parents that actually started in that window, which ended up being around that 18 to 24 month period, parents that started in that window went quicker and had less problems. The parents starting after two, which is what they actually classified as late, ended up with poo problems. Running away and hiding to poo, wanting the nappy back onto poo, withholding poo. One or more of those situations. Welcome, Anna Christie. Thank you so much for joining us today and discussing toilet training. Thank you, Tracy. I'm really, really interested in the work you're doing. Now, in 2010, you conducted a research project titled Toilet Training Infants and Children in Australia. Could you please give us an overview of that report that you did? Um, this is an original report. Um, it's the first time in Australia that anyone has looked at toilet training behaviours to this extent in Australia. Uh, I was looking at it from the environmental, social and the um, health impacts of late toilet training. By late toilet training, um, I was just seeking to establish um, what is the current age that people are toilet training their children and I mean what, when do they commence, when do they finish and has this changed in the last generation. My, my research confirmed that both the commencement and the completion of toilet training in Australia has now been delayed um, in, in the region of a year to a year and a half um, more than what it was a generation ago. And what we now see is that the later you leave it to start toilet training children, you miss what we call the window of opportunity. Um, and that window of opportunity is a window within which if you begin the toilet training, you will have a shorter toilet training and you will have less um, problems in toilet training. If you miss the window of opportunity, which is said to commence from about 18 months, depending on which of the experts you, you look at, um, you know, from around 18 months to perhaps 22 months are the, the best, or say, let's say a year and a half to two years is the window, um, you will have more extended, no, you will have the, the chance of a more extended toilet training. You will have a high, much higher possibility that the child will have dysfunctional behaviours and those dysfunctional behaviours uh, include hiding while pooing, refusing to use the potty and uh, pooing in pants and withholding, sometimes for days, withholding um, mm -hmm. poos. Once the child enters the terrible two zone, mm -hmm. then they discover the word no. Mm -hmm. 
and then they start to use um, a number of different things as ways of enforcing their individuality against their parent and any parent knows what it's like um, and it, it could be um, any anything could become the, the source of the conflict um, not eating a certain food but in this case we know that toilet training can certainly be a fantastic tool that the child can use in its in its quest to um, to exert its individuality. Well, I think your work has definitely got a role to play because word of mouth is a very strong, uh, a strong influence. When mums see the success that other people are having, they'll go, I want that too. You know, I don't want to have um, a child in, in nappies um, at, at three years of age. I, I really would like to see young mums learn that it is possible to throw away the nappies younger, at a younger age than what is currently believed. And, and I think that it would be a wonderful thing for the children to be given that opportunity to be toilet trained because I really believe that most children are, are, are happy to be toilet trained and because children's natural desire is to have control over their body. They want to have control. So why would they not want to have control over their continence? I think it is actually you're using the child's own natural um, inclination by allowing them to be toilet trained at a younger age. When it came to toilet training, and I collected the success stories that parents have sent that basically showed the backing up of this research. And what it highlighted was that all the parents starting in that window of opportunity went, had the same story. And that story was along these lines. 19 and a half month old boy, 12 days, day and night done. Interestingly enough, the mum also that had this little boy said, I wish I'd known this about my two-year-old who took a good six months to finish. 20 and a half month girl, toilet trained, 14 days, day and night done. And I guess again, the mum said to me with this, thank you so much for helping me toilet train my 20 month old in a week. It took a week to finish day training, a week to finish night training, but more importantly, thank you, I now have a more compliant child. See, the thing was, strong-willed mum, strong-willed child, butting heads. Very common scenario. And, and now, knowing her child, she now knew how to work with her strong-willed little girl to have a more compliant child. That's one of the key differences that you can get out of the situation. All the parents starting after two had the same scenario. They all struggled first. But you also can finish in days when you know your child. Three and a half year old boy, major food problem. A year and a half, got to, got to the stage of biting, hitting, etc. Next day done. This is the power in knowing your child. She was applying the wrong strategy. As soon as she got the right information, the right strategy for her child, seriously, next day done. That's the power in this. Three-year-old girl, 14 days, overcame a five-month food problem in 14 days. So this is the sort of thing, I guess, that we, that we want to help parents with. First, prevention, but if we're in the cure, we can help as well. So there's two things I'm going to cover. The first one is know your child. The second one is how to be best prepared with regards to the right tools. The first one with regards to knowing your child, it's establishing what your child's unique personality is. And this is where our unique to our system is our personality profile test for early childhood. You will discover whether you have a wise old owl, a cheeky monkey, a courageous lion, or a lovable lamb. And I'm going to quickly run through these four different personality types to give you an idea. And if your child hasn't started talking yet, just, just a heads up, personality is hereditary, so someone's to blame. We usually blame Dad. But situation is, this is where you'll be able to, to help identify. First personality is the wise old owl. This was Maya, my first, very much Kai, my second, person, second child. These are the thinkers of the world. Assess the situation 
and then proceed. So with regards to this particular personality, they're very cautious, they're an introverted child. Parents actually struggle to often get this child to the toilet in the first place because they don't like change and it's something new and they're fearful. So, and they often represent their battle of wills as a meltdown. So this is where parents, like I said, often stop based on that. With regards to this personality, they simply need information structure and routine. Once you give this to your child, it makes all the difference to the process. Because I knew this about Maya with regards to swimming, um, when she wasn't going to be in the water anymore, I prepared, well, sorry, when I wasn't going to be in the water anymore with regards to her doing her lessons, I prepared two weeks in advance. I got a book out from the library about a possum jumping related back to swimming. And so therefore, on the day, she was familiar, she knew the change, everything was fine. With regards to this particular personality, they need information. That's the pre preparation for it. If they've started talking, you know, based on the amount of questions you get. Oh my goodness, the questions. With regards to, again, Kai, when he was four, he came up to me and said, Mum, when do I need to start shaving? Like, oh, I don't know, darling, maybe 18? One question is never enough for a wise old owl. Went away, thought about it, stressed about it, came back. But Mum, what if I don't realise and I end up with a beard? One stressing at four that one day this beard suddenly got up here on his face and he's not going to know what to do with it. That's a wise old owl for you. The opposite to the wise old owl is your cheeky monkey. We had the thinkers, these guys are the talkers. Every child is like this, but with particularly with the, with the playful cheeky monkey, it's all about me. They're very social creatures, you know, to, to punish a, a cheeky monkey is to send them to time out. They can't stand it. Do that to a wise old elder, they go, great, get to read my book, do my puzzle and piece. You need to know your child. And so with regards to this one, this personality, no problems getting them to the toilet in time. It's just keeping them there long enough to go. Because they're onto the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. They're a whirlwind child, I affectionately call them. They're the ones that tend to put the cat in the toilet just to see what happens, and they're, but they're so adorable you tend to forgive them. So with regards to this personality, again, same game, Wise old owl, they love the structure and routine of it. Then when I slotted my into the structure and routine, three days done. When you, with a cheeky monkey, they just want to play the game. Same game, different focus, based on your child's personality. So with regards to these guys, like I said, it needs to be fun. If you're talking wheeze and poos to them, they're bored, they're off. You've got to make toilet more fun than their games. The third personality type, my favourite, the courageous lion, hear me roar. The research identified that there's two personalities that were the hardest to toilet train, and this was one of them. I agree, and actually it was a courageous lioness. They made it very gender specific, it was gender specific. I agree, these are the I do it, get out of the way world on coming through children, so very strong willed butt heads, that type of thing. Easiest to toilet train with our information. The difference is, they want control. No problems getting them to the toilet, if you're not telling them what to do. But with regards to the courageous line, they want control. So subsequently, they don't like the out of control feeling of going, so they tend to hold on and get constipated, urinary tract infections, things like that. So but you can't give a two-year-old control. That's the that's challenge. I was at a, 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 a on stage once where I uh, listened to a psychiatrist from stage said, by the time your child's three, they've established who's in charge. And if they've worked out that it's them, you're in trouble. And this is where, particularly with the courageous line, so illusion of the control. I want a lolly, do you want an apple or banana? Your choice, darling. My choice. I'm happy with either apple or banana, but notice I didn't say no. And missing out, oh well, it's not, if you don't do this, you miss out. It's, oh well, miss out then, daddy's going to get the prize. Quick, race the toilet so he gets there first. That all appeals to the courageous line. They just love it. They can't handle it. They have to have to do what you're, you're telling them because they need to win, they need to be big boy, etc. So simple, simple strategies by what you're saying can make all the difference to making a more compliant child. Then the opposite to the courageous line is the lovable lamb. These guys are the followers of the world. Cruisy, laid back, she'll be right mate, you think, great, I'll take one of those. Hardest to torture him. Seriously, unfortunately with laid back becomes lazy and they're the, the personality that simply won't show you signs of readiness. Very hard to work with, hard to gain independence, simply because they don't care. They don't care if they're wet or dirty. So they're the children that, no problems getting them to the toilet, they just don't finish well. They often get off and then go. And they don't, they can sit in there and they're nappy for hours without 
caring if they're well dirty. So it's really hard to motivate that child. Wheeze and poos, again, simply not enough. So su subsequently what you've got to do is provide extra motivation to go. And often with that, this particular personality, you've got to make toilet easy, accidents hard. They've got to come to the decision where this is all too hard, I'm choosing toilet. Because like I said, they'll choose the easy path every time, which is the nappy if that's what you've done. And if you've kept them in a nappy for two, two and a half years of their life, at an age where they can say no really well, then it's thanks mum and dad for showing me the best way to go. That's why they won't show you signs of readiness, things like that. So they're the four different personality types, just to give you an idea. The best tools to be prepared, the three things you need to look at very simply, daytime, nighttime, and leaving the home. And with regards to that process with day training, do I use a potty or a toilet? Basically, that's one of the main questions I often get with regards to it. That again is based on the, your game plan, age of your child, and the personality of your child. My sister at 14 months with her twin boys went straight to the toilet, couldn't stand the thought of double potty clean out. So that was her game plan. So you've got to consider that whole clean out of potty and transition. Hence the, the personality of your child. If you've got a wise old owl, seriously, just head straight for the toilet. One less thing that's going to throw them. And with, if, you're, if your child is nearing two, I, I, I would head straight for the toilet. It's just one less thing that's going to... Basically, the, the sooner you get to the toilet, the easier it is for you to go, leave the home, go to Nana's daycare. It's all toilet orientated. So they're the things you need to consider. So when you're using the toilet, you're going to, uh, oh, by the way, if you're going to go a potty, don't spend more than $10 on a potty. Honestly, I cringe when I hear the parents that spend $60 on a potty that flushes and sings and does all that. Why? Why get your child attached to this when it's months worth of use, when the toilet's years worth of use? So they're the sort of things you're best off investing in the toilet where you're going to be using it for longer. But when you use the toilet, you need what's called an insert, and that's simply add, remove, add, remove, add, remove six to eight times a day for the next two, three, four years, depending on when you start. By day three, you're over it. <laughs> and I guess, look, they do the job. It's just, seriously, they're a pain in the butt, excuse the pun. This is where something like your loopy loop saves the day. Two in one, child and adult seat. What it means is their seat, your seat. Their seat, your seat. A simple up, down, up, down situation versus add, remove. They can do it themselves. That's the difference. I guarantee you, why is old be questioning, why, why do I have to do this? No, 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 they'd be uncomfortable with it. A cheeky monkey and courageous line, they'll be wanting to use the same toilet seat as you and be big boy, big girl, those types of things. Easy, you need to make it easy for your local land. So those are the sort of things that you need to take into consideration. The other one, do I sit or stand my boy? This is again, boys are easier to toilet train than girls with the right tools. With regards to the wee man, weebies like daddy. Teach a, tell a boy what to do, you're not going to get the same result as showing. First of all, daddy needs to win the wee man. Give the man a challenge. But this is the essence of being able to teach the correct way. We flip flush, make that, no hands, no store required. And our yum yums, our food for Mr. Toilet, they spin around when you hit it with your wee wees. Need I say more? Honestly. So this is the process. You start with the wee man, end up with the wee target, hit the spot, make a truck, Flush goes back to the black spot again, transition into the toilet. There's tools to make toilet training boys easier. With regards to night training, there's three things you need to look at with regards to that. Correct game plan, manage wetness and motivation to go. If you're not doing the correct game plan to start with, bladder, brain connection, then you're making it very hard for your child to go in amongst a lot of uncontrollable factors. So this is where if you need at least have the correct game plan, using things like your bedwetting ebook, which comes in your packs, our Modo, fantastic, three-in-one aromatherapy, colour therapy, play therapy, helps with sleeping. They're the sort of things that help you with that. Manage wetness is the other one where your waterproof sheet protector and your big kid pants help with the, with regards to keeping your child dry so you stay sane at two o'clock in the morning instead of having to strip your entire linen to go through the whole process. Instead, you just use a waterproof sheet protector. And lastly, the motivation to go. You've got to give your child a reason. You've got to make it fun. Day training and night training as well. So just in summary, oh, sorry, leaving the home as well, just quickly, your put it plus is also your other situation with regards to making the the process so that you're able to leave the home sooner without the nappy on basically plastic bag bin it saves the day one poo in the pants while you're out and about seriously you know the value of this product and then the the legs fold out and it becomes an insert with regards to doing the the bottoms touching seats for hygiene and things like that
whole process with regards to what we do is very much about teaching the child, making it fun for them, but teaching you what to do. When you know your child, you can use this information, like I said, to taught training days, but also to help avoid avoid tantrums, help with eating, help with sleeping, because we're addressing the battle of wills. And you can upgrade to our boy or girl pack, because we've done the hard work for you, with regards to working out what a boy needs and what a girl needs. Very particular, like I said, boy is standing and aiming, things like that. But thank you very much for your time, and I hope that gives you the confidence then. Like I said, know your child, and it makes all the difference, not only to toilet training, but for helping for parenting and raising them. Thank you.